and welcome to my best books of 2020 video. So yeah, I've come downstairs because the Christmas tree's up, so I thought why not do some videos in December around here. So let's get into the best books of 2020 because quite frankly, there's been quite a few of them that I just want to scream about. I'm going to get the most obvious out of the way and say Skullduggery Pleasant because Obviously this is not the first time I've read these books, but it's still my favourite series of all time and having read them now in this terrible year it's been really nice to read these and just feel that comfort of childhood again I've got to say because obviously I know what's coming, I know there's quite a lot of like death, gore, destruction and all the rest of this in this series but at the same time I really love all the banter in it, the light heart in this, I'm loving finding all of the foreshadowy plot twisty bits the whole way through it this time round and stuff like this, it's just been a really good time reading these and it's been the ultimate comfort read, that's why it's one of the best books of 2020 for me. Then onto the actual books I have only read for the first time this year, first one I'm going to mention is A Blade So Black by L. L. McKinney and its sequel A Dream So Dark. Now these ones are Alice in Wonderland retellings but in this one Alice is kind of like Buffy in the sense that she is hunting down nightmares that are created in our world but sneak through in from Wonderland if I remember rightly. It's like these creatures that are our nightmares are created in Wonderland and get brought through and Alice and a few other people have to try and take them down and I love this series quite frankly. I think it's brilliant. It's filled with so much badassery. I love the pop culture references because I am a absolute sucker for pop culture references. I love the storyline in this. The writing was so good that when Alice was in trouble with her mum I felt like I was in trouble with my mum which is weird because I definitely wasn't and stuff like this. It was absolutely brilliant. I highly recommend it and quite frankly if it's good enough to make me an Alice in Wonderland hater love this book it's for everyone quite frankly. It is amazing. I'm also going to say Gunslinger Girl by Lindsay Ely because this one also took me completely by surprise. I did not see this book coming. I bought this book when Westworld series 2 was airing and I was thinking all oh, dystopian, slightly futuristic, gun singing, wild west kind of thing. Kind of reminded me of Westworld which is why I bought it but I waited until series 3 came out to actually read it and... I was slightly dreading reading this one because I'd completely forgotten what it was about. I was kind of regretting buying it to be honest because I was just like what am I doing? Series 3 is not based in the Wild West, it's not set in Westworld whatsoever, it's out in the real world, what am I doing? But I ended up absolutely loving this book. I thought the plotline was brilliant, I loved all the characters and it was just generally so good and just it was so good, it completely took me by surprise. I had no idea I was going to love this book as much as I did. It was just fantastic and I highly recommend it to anyone who's looking for a slightly Wild Westy type dystopian type idea. It was just great essentially, it was just great, I loved it. Also on the Westworld front I've got to mention The Kingdom by Jess Rothenberg. I adored this book, I thought this book was absolutely fantastic because this one is very Westworldy in the sense that you're following a whole load of robots in a park kind of thing and they in this one they admittedly don't know they're real but it's that kind of idea only these robots think are made up to be princesses sort of like Disney princesses and this book is all about what happens when someone is murdered in the park so this book is kind of like how to get away with murder in the sense that you are reading in the lead up to the murder and then what happens afterwards at the trial and so you're seeing both of those points of view while also trying to figure out exactly what was going on and it was brilliant. I'm not usually here for murder mysteries, I'm not usually here for books with love stories in them and both of these worked so well for me. I love the really really creepy vibe the whole way through and like how the main character Anna didn't really understand some of the more creepy elements of it. I really loved all the murder mystery of all oh, how did she kill him and why did she kill him and all the rest of it. I thought that was really really interesting. The ending was really good and left it kind of open for a sequel and I really hope there is because it was it was just so good. I love the writing in this. I love the characters. It was creepy. It was fast paced. It kept me on the edge of my seat. It was brilliant. So again, if you're a Westworld fan, pick this one up because it's rather good. I've then also got to mention The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab because I would not be a V.E. Schwab fan unless I mentioned Addie. Now, this one blew me away again. But first of all, I just want to talk about the cover and then also the end papers and then also 
the dust jacket is just, it's all just gorgeous first of all along with the sprayed edges i nearly forgot about the sprayed edges but it's all gorgeous in the way it looks but then the way it's written is also utterly beautiful like i'm not usually here for like the flowery writing in books i really don't like it usually it usually annoys me i get just bored of it i get lost in it and not in a good way but this one completely and at least sucked me in and just didn't let me go essentially now obviously i am a bit biased because this is v.e schwab but i was worried about this one going into it because i knew it was going to be heavy on the love story i knew it was going to be contemporary and not very and magical in the traditional sense of her usual fantasy and i just thought i was possibly going to hate this one and i absolutely loved it quite frankly i thought this was brilliant the characters as well i've got to mention before i start rambling about how brilliant it was the characters are some of the most relatable characters i've ever read i know i keep on saying that with like Vanya from like the umbrella academy and gwenpool and people like this but i'm not kidding addy and henry were both so relatable to me like it was like v schwab had gone into my head for several years and just written characters based on that it was unbelievable in that sense and i just loved it i was completely swept up in the story i didn't mind the love story of it in the end and i just generally had an absolutely brilliant time reading this and it hit me quite hard in the feelings because addy and henry's stories were beautiful my only thing is is that the ending got slightly ruined for me because i was literally on the last page about three chapters off like three paragraphs off from finishing and a deer ran down my road i wish i was kidding a deer ran down my road at the exact same time as i was trying to finish this book so the final chapter didn't quite hit for me but it's because of a sodding deer that just decided to run down the road in the middle of my village so that was fun quite frankly but i'm taking that as a sign i don't know what it was a sign of but i feel like it was very in keeping with this book so again i thought it was brilliant the ending was slightly probably could have given me a better impact if there wasn't a deer but i know it would have hit me very hard in the feelings if i wasn't distracted like the rest of this book did it was just fantastic and has to be one of the best books of the year and then the final physical book i've got to mention is the aru shah series by roshani chachki now this one again came out of nowhere for me because i'd read the gilded wolves last year and to be honest hadn't really enjoyed myself i just thought it was a bit all right essentially i uh, just i it was probably down to the fact that i was interrupted every five minutes and both times i tried to read it so i can't blame the book for it but in saying that i was still willing to give the sequel a go i haven't read it yet but i have bought it and i did also decide to try out her middle grade and this was amazing again pop culture references were on point the writing was on point i learned so much about the marlborata while reading this that i never knew before basically my knowledge on the marlborata was at nil when i read this one and i left knowing so much more obviously i'm not an expert or anything i just know basically the surface level of it but i felt like i learned so much in reading this i really related to minnie as a character as well with like her germ phobia like that has been my year essentially of just wiping everything down and worrying about every germ ever it's just totally me mini was in my head essentially so that was fun and i loved relating to her i loved aru as a character i loved the fact that she spent this entire book in her spider-man pajamas that made me laugh a lot and it was just generally absolutely brilliant and the second book as well was also good and i really really cannot wait to read the third one and the fourth one this series has been brilliant and it was definitely one of my favorite new middle grades of the year i've also got to mention the mistborn trilogy because i've been reading the entirety of brandon sanderson's books this year and while i'm not entirely the whole way through i've just finished oathbringer and i've got rhythm of war next year and then i'm going to take a break before i read mistborn era 2 i did read mistborn era 1 this year and it was incredible essentially it was only like my first sanderson series because i'd read elantris like the month before and then went into them and i just just fell in love with them i've got to admit the characters the plot twists as well gave me whiplash just i cannot believe the plot twists those books threw at me i loved finn's journey i loved ellen's journey i loved everybody's journey in this book the world building was incredible that ending had me nearly crying because i just totally did not see it coming and just seeing how 
everything weaved together so well was just unbelievable i loved the ending i've got to admit it made me really really emotional to read and it was just generally a really really good series i just i just loved it essentially i loved the mistborn series and it's got to be one of the best trilogies i have ever read and then i'm also going to mention a couple of comics i have done a full blog post of my best comics of 2020 which i'll leave a link to down below but i'm just going to mention a couple here because it is a best of video so the first one i've got to mention is obviously e-viewing to iron heart i have to mention iron heart i'm taking every opportunity ever to mention e-viewing to iron heart Anywhere. Now that she's actually coming to the MCU, I've got to mention her even more. So essentially, I love Ironheart. This is the first one I actually read. I actually did not start with Brian Michael Bendis's original versions, which I probably should have done, but I started with Eve Ewing, and she made me fall in love with Riri like this. It was unbelievable how well I fell in love with Riri and just how quickly I did, because I loved how geeky she was, I loved how intelligent she was and how unashamed of it she was, I loved how much she wanted to be a hero, I loved like her standing up to her professors at MIT and all the rest of it, I loved that introdu uh, introduction of her friendship with Nadia Van Dyne as well, I thought it was absolutely brilliant, I loved this comic and I, and my favourite scene of this that I have to mention is when she's talking to her friend about making Geordie's visors from Star Trek so she could cosplay as him. I was literally watching Star Trek ne Next Generation at the time of reading this and I just thought it was absolutely brilliant because I love Geordie as well so I loved that little element of it and I just I love Ironheart. I love this series. It's absolutely brilliant. I cannot recommend it enough for anyone who wants to get to know Riri. It's amazing. Speaking of Riri, I also have to quickly mention the champions here. I've only read the first one of this and then realised I've got to go back and read all of Nova first. But I love this one. It brought me so much joy. I love seeing these teams together. I love seeing the exploration of their mental health and stuff like this. I thought it was absolutely brilliant and it was just... Fantastic essentially. Champions made me so happy. Speaking of ones that made me happy, I also have to mention Dan Slott's Fantastic Four series. It's cheesy, it's ridiculous, it's very all oh, weird family. That's how we're going to save the day and they save the day every single time by being a family but that is the joy of the Fantastic Four. The joy of the Fantastic Four is the fact that they are a family and they love each other and everything and it's just it was such a nice sort of palette kind of comic, I guess you could say, and it just made me ridiculously happy to read. It's really cheesy, but it makes me feel like I'm a child again watching the original Fantastic Four, which is exactly what I wanted from this comic, and it just made me just so happy to read. I've then got to mention A-Force, because I never shut up about A-Force, but this was the first time I had ever read an all-female team-up, and I am officially converted. I mean, I was converted to the idea anyway, but after reading it, I want every single team-up ever, and I just love it it's just g willow wilson did such a good job with this as well i'm just so sad it got cancelled because it didn't deserve it and it's just generally a damn good comic about women being badasses together without needing no man to help them and that is all of my favorite books of 2020 so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do give me a thousand up comment down below with your favorite books of 2020 i'd love to know i'll also leave a link down below to all of my social media if you want to check it out including to the comic book sanctum which is my website dedicated to marvel comics and if you want to see any more of my videos please click subscribe here and over here with the link to my previous video but until next time everyone bye <laughs>